Today we're going to be covering some basic color theory and not to be confused with science. Yo dog, Kenny Bichet here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. Here in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California, I got another tutorial for you. We're going to be painting some of those revenants, those tree spirit people, but this time we're going to be painting the Wolverine style, the snickities, the double claw wielding guys. That is the limit of my vocabulary on the subject of Sylvaneth armies, tree persons. We're going to be playing off the colors on that Drycha. If you remember a few weeks ago on Twitch, which is our live network. If you want to see the live videos, check us out on Twitch. Check the description box below. We painted the Drycha, AKA the Bee Lady in a cool fiery red, yellow flame color scheme. It was pretty badass. Well, she's got a matching corresponding unit of revenants because if you remember the project we're working on covers all these themes, winter, fall, summer and all the little in between units to match the big units well she's a big unit now she needs a unit to match her we're going to cover that here today we're going to be playing off of warm and cool colors color theory all day let me put it this way color theory is just a word to describe that shit looks dope that's it you can read about it all day but that's ultimately what it comes down to is does that shit look tight warm and cool colors there's all these theories on how it interacts with the waves of light and how your eye perceives it, that uh, warm colors look up front and cool colors look in the background. So then there'd be a texture and there'd be depth to the model. And then the colors would quote unquote, have a complex relationship. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm just saying, hey, it looks tight. Not to mention, you know, you remember grade school, complementary colors, opposites on the color wheel. Well, opposites on the color wheel are also cool and warm. No big, no big shocker there, right? It's literally just working in complementary colors, warm and cool. Shit looks dope. That's all I know, not a scientist. I want to shout out a couple of clutch individuals over on my Patreon page. That's my personal crowdfunding page. It's how I keep the lights on. Real quick, I got my man Kyle, Big Bad Booty Man, Matt, Davis, Matt, C, my man Uriel, Thor, James, Zoe, and Luke. Thank you guys, you came in clutch this week. I can't do it without you, thank you. And as usual, check out the longboard.net, the home of the battery ports. Every link you guys need is in the description box below, including links to our sponsors. Definitely check it out, guys. Let's do this thing, guys. Here's that dry chat I was talking about. We painted her up on Twitch. Definitely check the BODs here on YouTube and Twitch, and of course on Patreon. Anyway, you can see this cool fiery scheme that we nurtured here. Now let's go back in time and talk about it. We used Army Painter Chaos Red. This is the spray primer. And our first color is gonna be some Evil Sun Scarlet from G Dubs Airline. So here it is, here's that Revenant. He was actually primed black and then a quick light top coat of that Chaos Red. We let it dry. And now we're coming in with our airbrush and bringing that sick, super bright red and we're just gonna add some highlights to it. Now the concept here is the bark is red. The spirit erupting from the bark is gonna be kind of fiery yellow. So we're just nurturing up a nice bright red because we are gonna incorporate our wash game. We have kind of a system that we use on these guys. It's kind of a marriage of quantity and quality. We use a heavy wash on the bark, minimal highlighting, and then we try to spend a little bit of extra time on the accents in order to get the army cranked out. That's the next level painting system when we're mass producing models for certain clients. Now, obviously we do some of the bigger units to a much higher standard. Now check it out. You might notice that some of the areas aren't fully primed. That's fine. I'm going to get them right now with the airbrush and anything I don't get, the wash will get. This is part of that system. You don't need to over really overthink the priming because we use an airbrush, because we use the primer, because we're going to use washes and varnishes. At some point, this model will be fully cool fully protected the paint will be on everything it's not even going to be like that just an ancient chinese technique so as usual we got to take it to 11 before we wash it back down to 10 so we're taking a real aggressive stance on the application of this red we're a liberal approach to what highlighting is and where the highlight the color is going to be you know made brighter by light we just said hey we want it to look bright right here now we're going to take out some troll slayer 
We're going to mix some of that into that red and start oranging it up, basically making it brighter. And normally you'd be in danger of making your red not red, but that's fine. We're not making a red model per se. The theme of this model is kind of fiery, kind of fiery. So we'll use as much orange and yellow as we want. Don't have to worry about it. So we are now establishing that midtone, that middle of the road highlight before we take any yellows into it until we brighten it up further or take it to pure orange. We always try to draft the previous color into the transition. So if we're using Troll Slayer, but the first color we used was Evil Sun Scarlet's, we make sure some of the Evil Sun Scarlet's still in the pot. We've got many videos on how we mix our airbrush solutions together. Check those out. If you're curious and this is your first time checking out one of our videos, we've literally got entire videos dedicated to that. So here we are now. After it dried and it muted down, we're incorporating a little bit more of that Troll Slayer Orange to those same highlights, really scaling them up. As you can see here, he's getting bright, still natural, or she, I should say. Looking good. This is basically a glazing technique, but with the airbrush. These are very thin coats of paint. We are kicking up the vibrancy every coat we apply, but we're also giving it plenty of time to dry in between these steps. You don't want to, you know, undo that nice, beautiful, thin, soft coat with the airbrush by getting too aggressive. There he is. He's looking great. She's looking great. Now we're going to take some gloss varnish from Vallejo. We're going to run it through our airbrush with a little thinner. We've got videos on that. The idea here is now we're going to seal it up. The soft, subtle airbrushing coats that we did here, which would be easily undone by an aggressive wash or any kind of dry brushing technique or just any kind of mishandling of the model. We're going to just bite that in the ass right now. It's done. Because now we're putting on the hardest core type of varnish, a gloss coat. We're going to put it on medium style. We're going to let it fully dry. Come back to it. Here it is. He is totally protected and encased in this varnish. But luckily, <laughs> we're going to mat that varnish down real quick with a little bit of Harmy Painter Quick Shade technique. This is red tone. So this is a nice deep red. But we're going to add a little of our medium, the quick shade medium. This is a literal must have if you use Army Painter washes. Dark tone, which is a black. So now we're going to darken it and turn it into a black red. But, you know, I'm going to swirl it together and I'm going to try to, I'm going to look at it. And it's, it's a little, little light for me. I want it to be a little bit more burgundy. I want it to have a little more depth to it without adding more black and dulling it up. So I'm going to reach in for some purple tone. And we're going to purple it up a little bit, giving us that nice maroon color giving it that nice dark presentation there it is so here it is aggressive wash over a slick gloss varnish the gloss varnish will break up the surface tension help the wash flow into the cracks much easier while simultaneously protecting the model against an aggressive attack that it is about to receive in the form of this super gangster wash because i'd have all my models out which i do and i'd be just going to town beast mode on all these guys so we're just making sure the wash covers every inch of this red, forcing it to flow into all the cracks, creating definition because contrast is basically making dark areas dark and bright areas bright. That is what the wash is doing. And when you gloss the model, it helps wick away the gloss from any of the highlighted surfaces and force it into the crevices, thus getting your bright color. But it will stain down and subdue some of your highlights. This is why we took it to 11 and now the wash is going to bring it back down to that 10 on the highlight scale. So there's nothing you can do about it if you're gonna go aggressive and wash the whole model, no matter how careful you are, it will, you know, change that value of your top highlights. But we've done everything, we've mitigated it as much as we can. We've done this a million times and we're pretty happy with the results. Here it is, looking pretty good. We're gonna let it fully dry and mat down. And there we go. You can see now the bark is very well shaded and defined, looks real natural. Now what we're going to do is take some of those colors we used earlier, some of that Troll Slayer Orange and some of that Evil Sun Scarlet, and we're going to make a real thin glaze here, and we're just going to lightly paint it over the spirit form of this Revenant, her actual spirit uh, body erupting from the bark, like as she's possessed this tree or whatever. Very thin coat, let it fully dry, no playing games here, because we are going to work up to a nice yellow. The name of the game though is very thin coats. I am gonna use the airbrush, don't worry. But before we use the airbrush, we want a nice base coat. And you don't want it to be thick and built up because then the softness of the airbrush as you start establishing highlights will just bring in all the imperfections that your aggressive paint brushing and 
you know, textured thick paint, <laughs> it, it just can't hide. So here we go. It's it's just doing its best to dry. You know, you can use a hair dryer if you want, whatever technique you like. While it's drying, we're gonna grab Hydra Turquoise and just be efficient right now. We're gonna lay down Hydra Turquoise, our cool color, over all the vines here and the claws. This is our cool and warm color theory. Now, right now, it doesn't look like much of a model. Right now, you're like, what the fuck are you doing to this model? This model looks insane. It's cool. It's cool. Don't worry. It'll look tight. I promise. I'm in the market. <laughs> but you can see where I'm being efficient here. I didn't go in and grab a hair dryer. I literally am just letting it naturally dry. And while it dries, I'm just going to attack a different part of the model with another thin coat. It's going to take multiple coats to establish this Hydra Turquoise. So why not just start laying it down now while this is drying? By the time we're done laying this coat down, the other coat should be dry. We can go back to that and then keep comboing off. You see, I like to be efficient, especially when I'm trying to produce multiple models that need to look the same. We're gonna hit the claws now. These claws kind of like weave into the matrix of a, it looks like bones. Like it's this, it like the bark looks like bone structure. So I just kind of follow the bones of these fingers, making them this hydro turquoise. Now with some of the other models with greens over browns, you can kind of just feather them into the brown. It's all good. But these are such aggressively, you know, cool and warm colors that you kind of have to find those defi those defining borders and kind of stick inside the lines or it just starts to look weird. Really difficult to blend this cool color into this warm color without it looking kind of silly. So we're doing our best. Nice thin coat, same deal. We are going to combo the airbrush off of this. So we want it to be its best and thinnest and least textured version of itself. Here we go, just make sure to flip the model around, inspect it on all angles to make sure you get all the nooks and crannies completely with your base coat, aka your primer, to the next color. Okay, now here we go, we added a little bit more Troll Slayer Orange into the mix, another thin coat over the spirit form as we work our way to yellow. It's just easier, like instead of just doing a million coats of yellow, we just worked up in color sequ sequentially. A little bit of orangey red, a little bit of orange, and then we're gonna be ready to airbrush here in just a minute. You see how well multiple thin coats do on something like this. Can't express it, just be patient on this type of thing. Now we're gonna let the time advance. We're gonna start doing our second pass on the claws, reinforcing this base coat, and you can see it's becoming more vibrant because it's real dull because it's a really you know, bright blue over a, a burgundy red. So that blue is going to look real dull. You're going to do multiple coats to get it the way you want. And then once it's looking good, you can really start comboing it off with any other colors you want, like Void Shield Blue or just basic white. It's entirely up to you. We'll use Void Shield Blue in this video. Might even already be mixed into my turquoise. I don't know, because that's how gangster I am. I can't remember everything I do. Not a scientist. Luckily, I make these videos so I can remember how I do things sometimes. All right, now we're gonna let that dry. Here it goes. Boom. We also painted the sigil on his chest, or her chest, sorry. And we're going to bang it down, throw a couple of highlights in it, make it look like it's glowing, a little bit of object source lighting from within, make it that nice cool blue. Looking pretty sweet. Now we're gonna grab Flash Kids Yellow Air from G Dubs. And we're gonna very carefully, very delicately airbrush it in from the top down, the Xenthial position letting it catch on her head, on the tops of her breasts, on her shoulders, and we're gonna kinda let the natural orange and red of her keep the shade underneath the breasts, underneath the ribs, underneath the biceps, the, you know, the deltoid. We want some of that natural shading to exist, so we're being very delicate here. This is a very thin down solution, a lot of flow improver in the pot. There it is, she's already looking great. We got more work to do though, she's not done yet. As we and, and also, here you'll notice that I'm getting a little bit of yellow on the bark. That's fine. That's what I want. I want that flame. I want this whole like crazy uniform effect. So we're actually going up to the tips of these branches, adding a little yellow. We're down to let some of the yellow hit the branches around her skin to create the illusion that she's glowing fiercely, like she's the heart of this tree, but the whole tree is really hot. Now we're gonna grab a great color from Minotaur, Snow White. It's kind of a pearl, off-white. We're gonna mix it into the yellow and we're gonna start dropping a new highlight down on the spirit form. You gotta be careful with this because it will pastel your colors. It will make your colors no longer vibrant. 
that's fine. I've got a trick to kind of re. So basically, the way to look at it right now is it's almost a pre shade like late in the game. Instead of pre shading the whole model, we're building it off of colors. But right now, we're doing a kind of a fake pre shade. Now that we've done those whites and it got really pasteled, we will grab that flash gets yellow and really thinly apply it over that white and you see it just yellowed itself back into, into, into place. So we're yellowing up the white right now and that just instantly undoes the pastel effect. Remember, you don't always have to go one direction with the airbrush. You don't always have to go dark to light. Sometimes you can go right back to that mid-tone if you want. Now it's looking great. It's looking real bright and hot. It's, it's getting washed out by the lights here because it's so aggressive. But what we're doing is we're taking some of that flash gets yellow and we're glazing it on the tips of these branches, reinforcing the highlight because the brush will do things that the airbrush could never do. So a couple of thin coats there, trace some of these lines, these aggressive angles on the actual red bark. Because if, if you want it to look like it's catching a glow from the spirit form, you got to come up with the paintbrush and do a little bit more work. You can't just lean totally on the airbrush. We're even going to come in here with a little bit of that Troll Slayer orange right now. You see it, it's the mid-tone. So now we're applying an orange glaze to kind of fuzz the border between that aggressive yellow and the red, giving ourselves a nice smooth transition. This is like kind of the fast way to do it. Normally I would just work subtly up from the orange to the yellows, but when you're working on multiple models, there's some shortcuts you can take. AK, hit it with the brightest yellow, then come right back to the orange, drop a quick little you know, transitional orange line between the yellow and the red, and it will blur those lines together, look great on a model on this scale. Take that orange, start dropping it in. This is very watered down glaze that we made from Troll Slayer Orange. And we're just dropping it in between her breasts and that cleavage in her collarbone. We're dropping it in her abs, in the weird um, rib cage that she has, in her belly button area. We're gonna drop, drop it in her eyes, in her mouth, in her bicep. We're basically just shading the highlights very subtly or sorry shading the shadow regions under the highlights very subtly with the same troll slayer orange very thin down let it dry do a second coat if you think you need to but if you're working really thin you will get nice transitions and you will bring the definition back out in the model and still maintain a nice hot glow so it doesn't look like you just painted a model yellow she still has the look of eruption like she's glowing and just like almost about to catch on fire that's what I love about these yellows and these oranges and these reds. It's very fun. There's a lot of complimenting. We have a lot of orange in our, in our model, right? Orange combos off the blue. We've got a lot of reds and a lot of yellows. Uh, these are all just super the warmest of all the warm colors. And we got almost the coolest of the cool colors here too. So we are going super aggressive on that theory. There she is looking her best right now. Feeling that OSL. But we still got to do something with those claws. Those claws are just base coated. Spoke too soon. We gotta finish the highlights on the OSL effect. So we're just taking that super nice flash gets yellow with a little of that white mixed in, and we're just dotting some of these edges, some of these perfect little 90 degree cuts. So it's catching that final piece of light, totally enhancing our OSL effect or our object source lighting. She is the object source light. Everything else is glowing off of her. Took a little bit of creative freedom, a little liberty here, a little poetic license. With some of these highlights, they might not be in the exact place they should be, but hey, you know what? I'm not a light scientist. I don't really know what it does. All right, now let's cut back in some of that turquoise, that hydro turquoise, so that way we can begin the final transition on these blues because we did get a little bit of the yellow on the blue when we were you know, coming in hot with our airbrush. No big deal, just doing one quick spot check to make sure everything looks great before we whip out the old airbrush one last time guys don't go anywhere this is going to be amazing i promise you it's going to look even crazier i'm already super happy with where we're at in this model i did this model very fast with these techniques all right so here it is void shield blue this is an amazing highlight from army painter we're going to run it through our airbrush and literally just going to get in tight and just blend it from the tips of these claws wolverine style back into the hand creating a nice transition creating a degree of sharpness and almost a transition for the sake of a transition that's what i love about the airbrush you can make things look three times more interesting on the spot with something as simple as this i love it makes models interesting i mean it's just cool you know there's literally no rhyme or reason i have no 
narrative in my head. Like I have no explanation for why I want to do it. I just know I do it because I own an airbrush. So I paint my models, I do what I can. I'm diligent with my paint strokes, but I'm hey, I'm not gonna let these points of these claws not be shiny and glowy. So here we go, we're gonna use a piece of paper to block her leg from the airbrush flow. And we're gonna just paint the same void shield blue on the tips of these tentacles, crotch tentacles, coming out, hitting them, making them look their best, making them glow, giving us an interesting transition for the sake of just pure coolness. Like I said, color theory is just another way of saying that shit looks tight. There it is. Now you can come in with your paintbrush and detail these claws out one step further. We're gonna take a little bit of white, mix in with that void shield blue, very thin glaze, and we're gonna hit those tips, reinforce them. Like I said, the paintbrush will do more than the airbrush can do. It's just such a more raw dog application. So now we're really enforcing that shine, as you can see, getting a real aggressive bling effect here coming in the palm making it look great we'll come in we can do these thorns you can do whatever you want but here it is she's looking her best she's an amazing model she totally matches big mama revenant to the drycha b lady love these models hey guys thanks for checking out this video definitely take a look at all these panels this is the new way of doing things on youtube booyah click around peace out homies